Well, Fortnite broke itself and the internet. In what can only be described as a pretty great PR stunt for Epic Games, they literally obliterated the game, like, all the way dead. It's fine, I mean it came back, all your money's still there, but was it worth it? And were there other off-the-wall PR stunts in the gaming industry that they have tried? Well, that's what we want to talk about this week on the Free Play Podcast. You are listening to the Free Play Podcast with Bubba Stallcup, Matt Warmbier, and Kate Katawaki, part of the Love Thy Nerd Podcast Network. What's up, nerds? My name is Bubba Stalkup, and you are listening to the Free Play Podcast, part of the Love That Nerd Podcast Network. And join with me, as always, are my co-hosts and co-founders of Love Thy Nerd, Matt Warmbier. Ooh-wee, hello, one and all. <laughs> and Kate Katawaki. Hello. I told you, man, I'm on my A-game today. Eyebrows are so high right now. Keep them up. They're all the And the way, other one. All the way up. Keep them Wait, up. they weren't Stay both awake. up? If they weren't both up, I've got nothing for you. Riveting podcast material. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, It's probably for the best that we we don't have this as video. Uh, Well, hey, guys, we are the Free Play Podcast, and we're glad to have you guys with us. Uh, We launch each and every Friday. We try and drop an episode, except for last Friday, where we didn't drop an episode. We dropped, well, we got stuck in the black hole. Oh, save it for the podcast. Mm -hmm. Didn't happen on Friday. Don't you dare. Hey, Kate, you also (laughs) save that for a different podcast. We don't need to be held down by the facts on free play. Uh, but we had we had a couple other things going on. Matt, this weekend, you went to uh, Missions Fest? Why don't you tell yeah, us about that? Yeah, Missions Fest Seattle. Uh, I went there and I, uh, I represented Love Thy Nerd. I had a booth. I talked to all of the missionary church people who came to CBC. Don't ask me what that stands for because I never found out. Uh, in Bellevue, Washington. Uh yeah, I had. I also had a seminar where I was able just to kind of speak to why it's important for us to do this, how we do it, how it's going. So um, it was really well received. Uh, I did a lot of talking. I spoke to a billion people. It wow. seemed like oh, okay because I was running this booth by my lonesome, uh, trying to teach a game of catch the moon, trying to tell everybody the the non-specific triangle thing that we call it the the three part of this ministry <laughs> what is, i can never say that the it's the, not, the nondescript it's, triangular it's a triforce it's a freaking triforce all right the three freaking triforce the freaking triforce redacted uh, yeah so we no not we i just <laughs> talked to all the people yeah. And we by proxy, you we by, by proxy. And proximity. I, was, I feel great. People were just really drawn to the the colors of the banner because they just they were bright there, and I was right <laughs> they there. Were bright there. They were bright there. They were bright there. Well, was, congratulations <laughs> to Bubba for making those. Yeah. Well, because so. it rained the entire time I was there, they were used to like all these gray and dark colors and wet, <laughs> and I wasn't any of those. So uh, um, next time. Yeah, but I made some great connections. It, it looks like we're going to have more speaking engagements at more conferences like this. Uh, and we'll be having a booth and possibly even kind of doing the games portion of it because who doesn't like games? Am I right? Yeah. Can't think Kate. of one person You're except right. that one, except that one person. <laughs> Somebody's me probably, but she no, probably plays, I bet like she plays, words, with she plays words with friends. She plays words with friends. And that's a game. Yeah. That's like my gaming. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gaming. <laughs> That's what I was thinking of. Yeah. So uh, it was great. I just got back last night at 1.30 a.m. I did Uber wow. from the airport. And I just, much? Like, I, just can't, I just cannot wake up today. Like, I've taken two naps. Uh, wow. I just feel great. Dang. I know. I'm getting old. <laughs> what a trooper. <laughs> I know. Is that, did you, were you able to like coax your kids into taking naps too? Like, hey, no, daddy's doing it. No, they were it. doing their, they were doing their math. I'm like, yeah, do your math. I'm tired over here. No, Aaron, Aaron, <laughs> Old happy is tired, kids. No, I felt, honestly, I got back and at 1 30, I was like, man, I'm just kind of wide awake. And then, like, you know, you, I slept anyways because I knew I'd be tired. And I just, you have those days, you just don't want to move. It's hard to lift your head's heavy. Coffee doesn't help. Yep, Being awake I know doesn't it. help. Oh, yeah. man. That's a rough spot for you. Coffee well, not helping. 
I know. I know. But here I am. I'm back. I'm better than ever. Wide awake, bright eyed and bushy tailed. People say that. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Say, people say a lot of things. Hey, speaking of coffee, I was at a, I was at a conference as well in Dallas. Uh, oh. and they were, yeah, Kate, we're going to get to the conference you were at in just a second. So no. be, be preparing your speech. We found a hole in the wall coffee spot called Island. It's E I L A N D in Richardson, um, Dallas area, Tejas. And it was like, I mean, I'm looking around it. My, my living, my, my living room, my bedroom that I'm in right now is like a bigger space than the coffee shop was, <laughs> but they, they had everything on like this automated, uh, slow drip process and they roast all their coffee right there. Um, and wow. like they took, they're like, Hey, you want to come see where we roast the coffee? And it's right over there. We looked at each other. I was like, uh, y- yes, absolutely. We do. And they're like, Oh yeah. Okay. Come on. And they're like, Hey, this is what coffee beans look like when they're not roasted. And they're white. I didn't know they were white or like a, like a lime, like a pale mm-hmm. lime green. Yeah, They're very light. You're verifying um, this, and- Matt. Yes. Confirmed. Okay. Just yeah, okay. sure. <laughs> yeah. If you don't believe Matt, even just Google it. It's there on the internet. <laughs> And so anyway, they're telling us about all these different roasts that they have. And I found a roast. I think it's the Kenya roast that they have. That's like sweet, like, like citrusy sweet. Yeah. Or was it Kenya more like an, usually are. like an oaky afterbirth? Yeah, an oaky afterbirth for <laughs> sure. No, it was like, we're, we're, we're roasting that or not roasting it. Um, it's getting boom roasted into my mouth in my house okay. and. I love it. So, hey, if you're ever in the Richardson area in Texas, just out inside of Dallas, inside, outside, upside down, inside out, each and every side, um, go and you're going to have to Google it because you won't be able to find it. Um, it is not on a real road. Well, it is a real road, but it's not real easy to see. Yeah. This, this podcast brought to you by Island Coffee, E I L A N D. Um, what were you talking about? Missions Fest. I was there. I did the thing. He was you there. distracted he me with thing. coffee. No, I, I did it, and it was great, and I would do it again. So I hope to do it again. So if you want me to come speak at your church or do your missions conference or just come tell the people why loving nerds is important, uh, send me an email, Matt, at Love Thy Nerd, or honestly, any of us. We'd, we'd love to come and yeah. hang out and do that thing. Maybe you could come to my That's church. That's one of the things we really want to do. Oh, yeah. Kate, what the heck? You can come to my church. Set it up. I'll well, make it Well, it probably happen. wouldn't be one of us. It'd probably be like Chris because he's you know, like right no, there. No, but I don't want Chris. I want, um, oh, can your, I want you can to your give this talk. Can church pay for me to be there? Yeah, 100%. Can I pay, can I pay for my flight and stuff? All I don't right, know. How, how cheap is the flight? Probably. And several in and out. So, so, I'll say yeah. your rate is $2,000. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, start there. Start there. I, I'm willing to talk down a little bit, but not much. <laughs> not me. I go up from there. We'll just start at 2K and see what happens. Okay, fine. Yeah. 3K, whatever. 2K all day. <laughs> but seriously, we do want to get out and do more speaking engagements and just share with everybody how we do what we do and why we do it and why it's effective. Um, and we have a lot of metrics that we can give you and a lot of tools and how to start a game night and how to reach the nerds in your community. Uh, let us do that for you. All you got to do is bring us in and we'll do the rest. So if you have any of those uh, conferences that you have coming up, maybe your church has a missions fair like mine does in November. Um, and Matt, yours does as well. Yeah, uh, you can yours. come. I'm not paying you because they're not we'll, paying me. So, we'll they, but maybe they'll pay for me. Did you ask? Uh, sure. Something special. Uh, different. Just send me, send me, um, Gerald's number. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll send you Gerald's number. <laughs> whoever that is. Um, but let us know because we wanna we wanna get in there and help equip you guys to just go and love and serve your nerdy neighbors better than you even are right now because you're probably doing a great job. Let us help equip you to do it better. That's what we're about here at Love Thy Nerd. Well, hey, let's move the show along to what we've been playing, because that's really what we're here for, right? Yes. Oh, yeah, the other Kate, news I'm here. Yeah, Kate's got some me. big news. Big news. I Huge news. I beat Link's Awakening. <laughs> Great. Bam, 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 bam. Yep. What am I going to talk about now? <laughs> um, well, I have other things to talk about, so I won't no, talk about much, because I see it. you, you only it. have two things. No, I beat it. So, great. Good for me. <laughs> Was it worth the money? Yes. Next. Okay. 
<laughs> no, you didn't See, keep look, talking I'm trying about to help you. I'm trying no, to help ahead. you. No, go ahead. I want to say like you were going to follow that up with something. I'll, I'll jump in like with my thoughts as well. Go ahead. No, that's it. Next. <laughs> I, I I quit. Okay, so I bought all the DLCs She's for Dragon Age. She's going to interrupt you later, yeah. Inqui- Inquisition because I've never played them, which is hard to believe considering wow. how big a fan I am of the game. I've only played one DLC, and I just about lost I my mind. Literally, I don't know what was wrong. I don't think anything was wrong. I think it was meant to be this hard. There was this like mid boss there, and it took me almost an hour to take him out, not dying one single time. What? That's just how Did ineffective. You try? Yes, I was trying, and I was like okay. getting so um, irritated, frustrated. frustrated. Okay. I'm like, why is this happening? This is so dumb. But if I quit, then I would have to start all over again. So but I just kept doing it. it. I finished it. And the rest you of the sure DLC the right wasn't. Way? Yes, I was yeah, I don't because think you're I like doing it the right way. There, I I was. There was nothing. You. It's not like you can switch weapons <clears throat> midway through. It's all locked. So I'm like, this is my life, and I I'm have sure, to get through it. I'm sure there's some sixth grader that's beaten it with a rock band controller or something like no, that. Mm, no, for no, no, sure. It's got some no. tips. No, 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 no. This is a drumstick. Okay, using this is this is the deep <laughs> roads. Okay, <laughs> this is the serious serious stuff happening right now in this DLC, and you should not laugh. It's very serious. So I've never, I've seriously, I felt kind of betrayed by Dragon Age because I'm like, how could you do this? Well, also you haven't played this 13 times like you have. No, that's true. But in the other game, no, this has never happened. Well, you're used to it now. No, not like this. Yes, yes, you are. Not like this. Not like this. Something was wrong. Not again. Something was terribly, terribly wrong. I want you to watch a YouTube video and figure out how people beat it faster, please. And then I want you to show us. What's the name of the boss? I forget, but I will. Oh, look yeah, it up. that's convenient. I will okay. Look, no, How I do uh, Pulling our legs. It's like a dumb name for a boss. It's a. Uh, look, I'm, I'm not going to remember the name. It's like a creepy thing that kind of floats back great. and forth. Yeah. It's called sixty it's, minute boss. <laughs> it's down in the it's down in the deep roads. It floats back and forth. You have to take out take it out, but then it like summons these other little creatures, but they don't really matter. And then my party kept well, dying. That's your problem. That's and then your I'm problem like, you right guys there. need to not die so you can revive me when I die. So there was just some like miscommunication mm, between my yeah. own. Well, it sounds characters. like you weren't very clear with them what what you wanted them. Your expectations. Yeah. I'm telling you, something was not right about this. That's why I'm saying watch a YouTube video. <laughs> but I passed. I beat him. It was done, and I felt so relieved. I just turned it off. I'm like, I can't. Why? You gonna pick it back up? <laughs> did, did you, you save it? it? Did you beat it? Yes, yeah, I saved it, it, and I picked it back up and finished oh, and beat okay. the DLC. Oof. And even the final boss was not like that thing. So that's why I'm saying something's wrong. Anyways. I also picked up that game Little Town Hero from Game Freak. You might oh, know them yeah. from games such as Pokemon, if you've Never ever heard of it. it. And I really like it. It's really novel and interesting. And the way they do combat is with like, you use ideas as attacks. And so once you use an idea, sometimes it'll go away and like all this other stuff. But I must be dumb or something because I cannot get past the very first battle after the tutorial. And I played it three times. I'm like, something again, Did something's take you another not. 60 I think, minutes. I think yeah, you're losing your touch here. Something's not clicking. I'm like, what? Kate, I think you need to take a video game break. No, I it need like it. Or it just sounds like you're get burnout. good. I mean, I was going to say that, I know, but it sounds I need like to she's burnout. No, that's you, not what You know, you, you probably need to go back to Captain Toad's. Like, no. play, play a game mm-hmm. you can like, get mm-hmm. through, get your confidence back. You need a palate cleanser. We've talked about this. You do. <laughs> Play a game I can get through. <laughs> Are your fingers working? How are your thumbs? They feel okay? No, that's all fine. You, I'm just clearly hey, not understanding you, hey, how you it works. Long. You're getting older. Are you getting arthritis in your thumbs? No, my thumbs are stronger than ever. Okay. You working them out? <laughs> oh, there's another thing I didn't put on here. Um, I played Gang Beasts on PlayStation 4 with Chris Gwaltney and Ryan Guerra. And them? I threw Chris Gwaltney into a grinder. And it was great. I watched his little character still, get grinded up still and got it. in the flames. Was Garrett in town? No. Online. It's called You Play Online with Other Friends. Uh, I honestly had no idea you could play that game online. You can. And I it thought is it was, I thought buggy it was couch co-op party game. as heck. And that's part of its fun and endearingness. So I highly recommend Gang Beast if you like ridiculous games. I laughed so hard I was crying and my stomach hurt really bad. <laughs> that, well, that part's normal. Well, but. that's... <laughs> Yeah, every day. 
<laughs> the, the laughing part, not so much the stomach hurting. I I'm telling you, you know what? If Bubba is not available, I will drag Chris Gwaltney into the flames. And I did so on multiple okay. occasions in this game. I sacrificed myself just so that Chris would die. Well, so, you're doing right. oh, that's worth it. Let that sink in. And Matt, let's did see you have big the news two here. Trucks area? Oh, yeah, we played every area. You're, you have to lay down before them. the sign hits you. you gotta be yeah, yeah. Play yeah, all the sure hits. Do. Gotta be careful. Oh, hey, I have some big news also. Yeah, yeah that's what I, I said. What is your big news? I was also going to say <laughs> this thing. <laughs> I also beat Link's Awakening. Oh, oh well, that's and, old news now. Yeah, that's, that's old, old news. news. <laughs> but no, I, I did it. I, you know, I, I saw it through. I came to the end. Now, Kate, did you go and watch the uh, the secret ending? Yes. No, did you die during the game? Did I die? Now I did don't you, know what you're talking about. Did I you die at end. all during the game? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I assume had to yes, have. Ever, okay, exactly. So <laughs> you did not get the the secret ending. What? Of the what? Game. You don't get Super to see secret it? Ending. If you die one time in the game, you don't get to see the secret ending. And I didn't okay, find that I out until I'd already it. died six times. If you look you'll <laughs> on your save log, you'll see how many times you died like next to a little tombstone. So I think it was like a five or six. And I was like, I'm not starting this over. I'm more than halfway through the game. And I'm pretty sure I died like just doing, you know, stupid stuff. But I was like, I'm not doing it. I'm just going to finish the game and I'll watch a YouTube video. So I finished the game. Yeah. Watched the credits roll. I was like, okay, let's go to YouTube. And let me tell you, it would not have been worth it. Do you want some spoilers here? If you were playing <laughs> yeah. this game and you're trying yeah. to get to the end of it, I'm going to spoil it. So you just turn to it. You're, I'm not going to spoil the whole ending. But after the credits roll, it goes back to the ocean scene because this is, you know, it's on an island here. And it, go, it goes up into and then the it sky. Says your looking princess up. is in another no. castle. Yeah. No. Into you see sky? a seagull fly, a seagull fly past. And then you see Marin's like upper body and her head appear. And it just goes, ha 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 ha. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> like that's Earth. it like you had to play the entire game and not die for that right there and i was like that wasn't for worth it was nothing uh... yeah it was nothing so um if you're going through the game trying to beat it without any lives lost save yourself some trouble here it's not worth it you don't get a trophy <laughs> you get a chortle that's lame you get a chortle <laughs> you get a chortle it's a, you know, it's a game boy game what do you expect uh but overall, minus that ending, I think the game was worth the money. And Kate and I spoke on just like what makes a game worth it. I mean, this being a sixty dollar game, and it, it was probably a twenty hour start to finish, I'd say. And there's some more I could do, but um, I don't know, you, you were engaged. The music was great. The you know the the dungeons were great. The NPCs were great. Like it all came together really well, especially for being an old game. You know, remastered. Not that they changed anything except yeah. the graphics. So, uh, Bubba, how about you? How far are you? Uh, I thought I was far, but I'm probably not. Um, I have not played one single second since the last time we talked about it. Okay, so you're getting so. There. I I think I have two instruments, maybe three. Okay, we'll finish I feel it. Like up. two. Finish it up. You got this. Okay. Yeah, I'll there's, finish tonight. Yeah, there's nothing. Not? Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Just own it. It's fine. Two instruments. No, I man, I love that game. I think it is so great. I mm -hmm. will continue. I mean, it's probably. I think I already said this, but it, it it's definitely top five easily for like Zelda games for me. Um, it might be higher than top five, but I'd have to really sit Ooh. down and put pen to paper. Like yeah, the Link's, feeling Link's that I get when I play it. Google is number one. That well, obviously, <laughs> no, number one in my heart <laughs> yeah. for sure. I, I, I don't know. Like I, I get the same feelings that I get when I first was playing and figuring out a link to the past yeah. while I'm playing this game. <clears throat> and those, those weren't even feelings I, I, I didn't have. So it's pro it's probably top three for me because Breath of the Wild I had those, Link to the Past I had those, and I'm having them with this game. I didn't have them with Twilight. Uh, Princess. I didn't have them with the first Legend of Zelda. I definitely didn't have them with two. I didn't even have them with Ocarina of Time. Um, and, you know, Majora's Mask is probably down there for me with Boogaloo. So, mm, wow. Yeah, I guess it's it's probably easily top three for me. But, okay. Yeah, I love it. And I, I will finish it at some point. 
I've not played Wind Waker. I've not well. played Wind Waker. I've not played uh, what's the the sword one? Heavenly Sword, Skyward Sword, Sword yeah, Master. Same thing, yeah. That's the mm-hmm. one. Yeah, I think um, I would... I've not played a lot of the DS stuff. I've not played uh, Phantom Hourglass, uh, Oracles of Ages or Seasons. Um, there are a thousand Zelda games I've never yeah. played. I'm Minish really Cap. happy. Okay. I like Minish Cap. I want them to re-release and remaster Seasons and Ages. Probably Minish Cap as well. That one was really good. But yeah, anyways, uh, I since after I beat that, I went on to continue Super Mario World to Yoshi's Island, and I'm over halfway through the game still enjoying it it's definitely a you love that game it's good man it's it's just honestly it's one of those games i don't have to think about to do i just you know you're mm-hmm. just just getting through a game you're just like it's relaxing i'm not sure how i feel about them calling it super mario world 2 and i know we're like a billion years after oh. the fact here but i you think could it could have been just file a complaint if you want. can i yeah you probably call call uh, the I'll, Nintendo just, Power. just tweet it just tweet it. Call I'll, I'll look in the latest issue of Nintendo Power and yeah, I'll do it. Do a letter to the editor. I'll probably have um, to draw. Something. I think you're right, but it, it's honestly the game that kind of like springboarded him in his own crafted world, woolly world, all those other yeah things he had. So that's which I'm not I've mad at. No, no, I'd be right. Yeah. I think they just kind of wanted to keep that Super Mario vibe going, and they did. And it is similar, but very different. Yeah. So like all mm-hmm. Mario games. <laughs> you've never been more right <laughs> yeah uh what about you bubs what have you been playing um we had a chance to play terror below which terror below. That's, that's the first time i've been able to play that game like sit down and actually play it i've seen it played a hundred times i've tried to watch videos on it i think we're gonna need to make a video on it because i haven't watched one that really i walked away from and said oh okay i know how to play this game now yeah and so uh, be prepared for that content you didn't know you needed coming soon. Um, but it's a fun, uh, legally distinct, non-Tremors game. And I liked it. We played it, and we had you know some hiccups here and there, first time play. It took about three times as long as the box said <laughs> yeah. to play that game with four people. But it was great. Loved it, man. I think once you um, also, get rolling and everyone knows how to play it, it goes a lot faster. Yeah, I would imagine so. Like once you understand, okay, this is where the attacks are happening. Mm. This is how to actually do the bounties. This is where each place is, like stuff like that. Um, familiarity with the board, I think, and just kind of how, how the distractions work and how you can work them in your favor. Yeah. Um, but if you haven't played that game, it's a great game from Renegade Studios. And uh, go and pick it up. Check your friendly local game store. And if not... Um, you, you can buy it from the Amazon. So, uh, we also p- had a chance to play that same night at our game night. Um, we played Unmatched, and I had a chance to play Unmatched with the same guys that I call my Dice Throne Bros. Mm-hmm. We just didn't set up Dice Throne that day, and I set up Unmatched, and they liked it. And I'm not saying it's going to be the be all end all switch from Dice Throne because it can't. Dice Throne has way too much to offer yep. at this point. But they did like it, and it was different enough that it was similar in that you're like battling. They really enjoyed the system with act, no dice, you know, for lack of a better better term. There, Dice Throne has got a huge dice element. It's, Unmatched yeah, has the name, yeah, yeah, zero, <laughs> zero dice. But they like that. I told them about the new stuff that's coming out and, you know, the the Raptors and all that mm-hmm. stuff. And yep. they're interested. I only brought the base set because I don't want to overwhelm people with Bruce Lee and Bigfoot and Robin Hood and all that stuff. Oh, really? I was going to ask you who you were. No, I still – well, I have – who did I play? I played Sinbad. And I don't think I fully understand how to play him yet because you have to get those – those uh, ship cards, cards in yep. your discard, yeah, the voyage cards in your discard pile in order to to be able to sail the seas, basically increase your movement. But they won, so they loved it. It was great, of course. Yeah. And yeah, it was Anna and I. She was Alice. I was Sinbad against uh, Arthur and Medusa. So, but that was good. Uh, probably the best game that I've played so far um, is Parks. Like, if I haven't spoken enough about Parks, and if we haven't spoken enough about Parks, go buy that game. Just 
just go get it. Go to Barnes and Noble. If you can't find it there, go to your friendly local game store. If they don't have it, just go straight to the Amazon and buy this game. It's beautiful. It plays well. It is a milkshake game. So we're always mm-hmm. talking about these games that are going to bring people, you know, around a table and get to them the excited yard. about what's happening. Yeah. Both it's hand. the milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. So we played it that the game night. And then we also played it again yesterday at our church's get together. We had this thing we called red out day, which is basically a church family picnic. And people were, I had somebody come up to me and say, Hey, I've seen this game on Facebook and I've always wanted to play it. How do you play? And I was like, Oh, pff, like this. Sit and down. then they got to, act. we were already playing, but they got to watch us play. And I mean, really, we had probably 20 people around that table watching us play parks. And it's super simple because they say, Hey, what, what is this game about? It's about visiting as many of the 59 national parks as you possibly can. And that is the most disarming statement for tabletop game like that I've ever had to say, because everybody knows what a national park is. So, um, yeah, that was that was really good. Uh, we got to play that. People love that, and I'm probably gonna have to buy some more copies of that for people. Yep. Uh, I also had a chance to play Star Wars Destiny, which is the dice card game uh, with my son. Caleb, my seven-year-old, has been asking for months to play this game. And I have just never wanted to. I've never had the time to sit down and learn it. I've tried to watch a couple of videos, and I just end up falling asleep halfway through them. This time, I was like, all right, let's play. That game is fun. Holy crap, that game game. is fun. Good old John Ibsen. Yeah, well, I immediately put something in the community and was like, "Uh, I'm about to spend a lot of money on this game. And he and Falvo were like, hey, I'll send you stuff. So this is a call to anybody. If you want to send me Star Wars Destiny (laughs) stuff, my son and I will play the crap out of this game. I haven't gotten the Uh, past couple expansions. You better have. Yeah, I missed the past couple expansions that came out. But I have a a lot of the the first couple releases. It's fun. It's good. I think it's great. You can get the starter pack for like 20 bucks. Maybe even cheaper. Yeah, now it was twenty bucks when I bought it. Yeah. Who knows what it is now? It's been out for years. But big ups to uh, to Fantasy Flight on that. That's a, it was a solid game. I like it, and I'm ready to play more because Caleb is now starting to understand the strategy of like how to play these games and when to play cards and when to hold them and stuff like that. So, um, we like that. And then my wife Anna, last but not least, she. I guess it was free. I don't remember what happened. But anyway, Overcooked made its way onto my Xbox. And she started playing it. And then she was like, you need to play Overcooked with me. And I've played Overcooked <laughs> with you guys before. Yeah. So I know what I'm getting myself into. Oh, and so I kind of, I kind of, I was super tired for a couple of nights. And so I just didn't play any games. And every night she was like, you want to play Overcooked? Hey, are we going to play Overcooked? Leave so we me finally alone. sat down to do it. <laughs> and we're both the kind of people that won't move on until we've three starred the level. It's Smart not enough ones. that we just pass. Mm-hmm. And so right now we're not very far at all. We're stuck making hamburgers and we're going to get to 280. We're going to hit that 280 mark for sure. I believe in you. Um, yeah. So does Aww. she. I'm not Steven so sure. won't play overcooked with me because he said it's Karen too stressful. Mm-hmm, same. Do you yell at him or do you strategize? Because I've found that you have to do the latter and yell, not the former. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't say that I yell. I just, he won't, he's never even tried once. Say? I don't know. Probably oh, okay. not give good direction. But my cousins and I did just fine, except for the one cousin. <laughs> we did just fine. You weren't yelling enough then. Well, we told him to yeah. stop playing and get out. He was throwing onions on the floor. If you're oh, throwing right. onions on the guy. floor and running in circles, it's not helpful. Get out of the kitchen. Sometimes you got to put an onion on the floor, though. He was just... It's a lot easier... Just trust me. The oh, way, well, I, I believe you. I'm just thinking... The way he was putting the onions on the floor was disrespectful. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh, really oh, quick. Uh, the boss, I was Googling while you were talking. The boss that I struggled with is called an emissary alpha, and it is described as a wave-based grueling boss. 
Okay, how long does it take to, to beat the boss? What's the fastest give, time? They didn't give a time or a, they didn't give an average or a fastest time. I'm so. going to guess two minutes. You look that up while I talk about PAX Unplugged. So yeah, we're I'll running out looking. of time here. <laughs> if you want to come with me and the LCN crew to PAX Unplugged in the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia, December 6th through 8th, mm. you'll get there the 5th. You'll probably leave the 9th. Just do it. I have to buy the passes this week. So when you hear this, you pause it. You go to you just go to <laughs> lovethynerd forward slash outreach, or you send a message to Jaboy me, and we're gonna make this happen. <laughs> so you're running out of time. I'm not gonna mention it next podcast. Don't make me cry. So let's do it. We're gonna go there. We're gonna well, look well, for tangible uh, ways to love. And serve our nerdy neighbors. Uh, we Don't want to be, leave. like Bubba said, we want to be the love of Jesus to nerds and nerd culture. Uh, and you're like, well, hey, hey, Matt, what's that even mean? Like, we're seriously going to go there. We're going to teach games. We're going to sit and play games. We're probably going to help out in exhibitors' booths because that's what we do. We look for just easy ways. If you're yep. a photographer and you take really great photos, come take some photos for cosplayers and give them away for free. If you can say hello and yep. thank you, come and hang out with us. Let's do this thing. Uh just send me an email if you don't know what all that means. I'd love to tell you more. You know what would be really great to have? And we've talked about this a couple of times. I can't remember what? if we talked about it publicly. But what we, is it? <laughs> thanks, Kate. Um, <laughs> a cosplay medic. Yeah, we've talked about that before. So if you can sew really well, yeah. too, come sew people's cosplay. And if you can sew on the fly. Well, like mini without a sewing machine. machine. No, mini yeah. sewing machine. They have those little hand ones that looks like a, a like a little vacuum sealer. <laughs> we stop, Kate. It is called a stapler. You're right, but that's not what we're talking about. Yeah. Okay, Kate, you can't come and do this. Yeah. Well, well so I want to see. I want to see her work first, and I'll, I'll decide. So. Yeah. Uh, let me know. That would be rad if you guys could come. Uh, yeah. Anyways, Kate, take her away. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> Maybe clear your throat before next time, but that's good. We'll work. These are Hold notes on. that we can go okay. over. <clears throat> Kate, take it away. No, you not, cleared not your you. throat. Not <laughs> <laughs> you can't. That doesn't help her. That does not help. Anyways, what we're going to talk about today is the possibly brilliant marketing with the Fortnite black hole incident. And then we're going to talk about some... We'll let you figure out the word to describe them. Some other marketing that video game companies have done. But I'm just going to cover this <laughs> Fortnite thing since you guys might not know about it. But... On Sunday, October 13, 2019. The year of our Lord. Oh my gosh. At 2 p.m. I feel like we PM. need to have like the Unsolved Mysteries music behind this right now. At 2 p.m. <laughs> Eastern Time. <laughs> you may have felt a great disturbance online, as if millions of voices, around 250 million, cried out in terror and were suddenly silenced. Why? The free-to-play Fortnite concluded its 10th season by apparently destroying itself and sucking its very existence into a black hole. Instead of just shutting down servers for a little bit, they turned it into a huge in-game event that resulted in the black hole. And this, bum, bum, bum. Yeah, this was all a live event, too, by the way. So people were participating in it and having no idea what was going on. Yeah, define participating. I'm walking around watching. That's participating, isn't it? Yeah, sure. Yeah, people with Twitch streams where it's just them watching a black hole in the middle of their screen. And meteors that was... fall and explode and yeah. all this stuff. I watched it. But... So it's at the beginning of... Post. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like after the hole, post hole. Just, just oh, watching... I, watched, I watched somebody's stream of it of during the thing, the event. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, It was cool, but... A lot of people thought, is this the end of Fortnite forever? Are they shutting it down? Is this their way of saying, bye, forever? Yeah, is my money gone? Is my money gone? Is all the monies that I spent in this free-to-play game gone now? So, you know, people were freaking out. The answer is no. Oh, okay. What? That is The answer is no. People were freaking out, and so PlayStation and also Nintendo actually had to issue statements confirming that the game and all of the doll hairs that they spent were not gone. So that kind of spoiled the what was going to happen a little bit, right? I mean, the servers the servers were only down for a day and a half, but if you tried to log on, there'd be a message saying that the servers are undergoing maintenance. Please try again later. And then the black hole, just darkness. So 
It's kind of sad. The funniest thing about they it, came back. Well, they came funniest back. Funniest thing yeah. about it was that it happened. They did it on North American Columbia Columbus Day. I say North America because nobody else celebrates that holiday. No. It's just us. No, it's Indigenous but they People did it, Day. The, well. the, the server went down on the holiday, mm-hmm. which probably was the dumbest thing you could have yeah. done. Was it? The because thing. then all the peoples watched it. They watched it, yes, but nobody got to play the game because it came well, back online the next day when all the little nerds went back to school. Right. That's they could have okay. made it so continue to play it and purchase your skins, outfits, whatever you call them in Fortnite, costumes. Yeah, that's it. Mm. Purchase yeah, more disguises. of your stuff. Spend the money. Disguises. Instead, they <laughs> earned zero. I mean, maybe they got some more, you know, they got a lot of tweets about it. People were talking about it. Yeah, literally zero income that day, for sure, when everybody was, like, sitting around. It, I mean, and, it was a – it generated a lot of PR. That's for that's sure. That's the thing. And that's what we're looking about with this thing is, like, do you think it was worth the money loss – of a day and a half to do this and get all the PR with this black hole marketing. Yeah. I mean, basically it was, you could call it free PR, but I guess it was costing them the money they didn't earn for yeah. that day and a half. Well, I read they make $300 million a month. So what's that? $30 million? Okay. None <laughs> taken. Yeah. yeah. They're probably gonna be okay. Wait, that's, no, like a, that's, that's not $30 change. million. Dollars. Hey, I don't know. you do the math. Just say, that's why you say you do the math. You know, you, <laughs> you do, do the, the math. <laughs> You do the math. At least ten dollars. Yeah. Clausen, take that out and put the right number in. Put me saying the right He's number. He's not going to do that. Redacted. In that, nope. In that <laughs> section. But yeah. So after a day and a half, all the servers went back online. Fortnite Chapter Two officially began. Revamped map. Thirteen new locations. All these new features. Basically, a complete reboot of the game. So, some people are saying, you could why? Fish? Yeah, you could fish. You could eat the fish. Well, I mm. said if I wanted to play a fishing game, I'd play Super Bass Masters on Super Nintendo, okay? Not Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> you give me the dream, the Dreamcast fishing reel or nothing at all. I yeah, wanted, that's I'm, right. I'm playing Seaman. Yeah, well. <laughs> it's easy. In the past, Fortnite's updated things pretty quickly. Like new features have gone up pretty fast. You know, there's not... You know, the downtime is maybe like two hours. It's not a whole day and a half. So this was the longest time ever that they remained offline and a completely unprecedented blackout in gaming history. Woo woo. Ah, pun. Yeah. And even their, all their social media went dark too, saying like, this is the end. Gives people a couple <laughs> days off here. Yeah. So it's like, I just what think, do we think they could have done it think? on a different day. Like, but would it have like made. <laughs> Part of me thinks. Yes. It, 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 it caused distress on purpose. So maybe that's the day they would have made the least amount of money. A holiday? Like, Columbus I, Day? They have people who do the statistics, it's, I'm sure. Hey, I'm just going to give them the benefit of the doubt that's here. Accurate. You're probably yeah. right, though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They, they, there probably was several meetings about this. <laughs> several, several. I just think hundreds. it was a weird misfire. You know, for them, do it. I mean, drop your, do your update on a, on a Tuesday. Okay. Mm-hmm. There are still going to be people talking about it. It's still going to be the talk of the town. Hey, we Everybody's know that on tweet our, about it. We know on our social media spaces, Tuesday is a day with most engagement. So yeah, maybe Tuesday's said, hotness. Yeah. yeah for them, but, maybe but, Tuesday is their hotness too. But they wanted, I'm, I mean, I'm saying, I'm assuming they wanted people to participate in the live event. Participating meaning you watch it, not really do anything. And <laughs> getting your lazy boy and watch. Getting your lazy boy, watch Snuggle the black up. hole, and just have that moment of just like, what just happened? Everything's black. I can't access my account. What's going on? There's complete and utter fret level midnight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like, well, I don't necessarily think this this was like too dramatic of a move for them. I think it was great. I I think the event itself wonderful. Love it. Make all the nerds feel like they just lost years of their life. I love that. I just wish thinking as a person who doesn't play Fortnite, but if I did, I would have liked to have played the new content on the day when I could have thrown an entire day at it. 
that's yeah. already, that makes sense. That makes sense. That already, you know, my school already recognizes this as a, as a holiday. Um, maybe, you know, my, my job gave me a three day weekend or whatever. Like just let people experience that content without having it reflect or impact negatively on their real life. So I don't, that's, that's the only thing I have to say about it. I think it was great otherwise, but. I just would have, would have picked a different day. Well, that's why they didn't ask you. <laughs> yeah, so you're exactly right. They knew I would say all of it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. They're like, that guy's a jerk. Um. Well, I mean, so do you feel, I'm thinking, do you guys remember when Cards Against Humanity uh, did like the Kickstarter for nothing? And it was like, send money to them and like you got like a box of dirt or you were literally funding absolutely nothing it Mm -hmm. was just like for them to go party or something like that (laughs) like oh my gosh what are what are some other weird publicity stunts that games and companies have done in the gaming industry it's funny you ask that oh yeah uh yeah i'll go first yeah. How about this? So back when <laughs> Mass Effect Thanks for 3 making that out, smooth transition I know. really well, I'm just, janky. I'm just yeah, going to make that. it happen. Hey, no, what are you talking about? I'm going. I'm doing this. Uh, <laughs> so back when Mass Effect 3 was released, they decided it would be a wonderful idea to send copies of the game into space. Uh, so they attached <laughs> them to these. They attached copies of the game to weather balloons. And they sent them into space. Each, sent them into space. Each game uh, had a camera and it had a GPS system attached to it, so that the players could locate the game. And if, for whatever reason, the game decided or the balloon decided to pop and the game came tumbling down to Earth, if you found the game, you could play the game early. <laughs> but oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> so, like the, these gamers went out like tracking these weather balloons these games across the countryside just trying to find one that fell <laughs> uh, the odds of them falling into the ocean were probably over a hundred percent oh for sure for sure they're gone forever i mean but maybe they made it to space maybe then how fitting if you <laughs> got a mass help. if you got a copy of mass effect 3 that had touched space how fitting is that it just works it just works so do you think they're just like floating up there like in the in the atmosphere right now like yeah watching down on us yeah in the gravitational pull like with all the other space trash mm. yeah and then the aliens are going to come to invade us and can they're going to say what's this can you imagine and if you found then they're going to pop yard? out there and then they're going to have their microsoft 360s on their spaceship that they can just put it in and just get to plan yeah. Well, you just never know. Yeah, come on, man. These aliens don't need technology like that. They just zap it with their finger and go right to a screen. They're five k. That's messed up. <laughs> you don't want to start with three. I mean, no. Can, can you imagine like going to your front yard like today and finding this copy of Mass Effect attached to a popped <laughs> weather balloon, just like <laughs> hanging there? That would make me so happy, like draped over my chicken cool. coop. <laughs> <laughs> Well, be on the lookout. They might still be out there. I sure hope so. <laughs> well, get on the website. Yep. Oh, I guess you got to track them. Got to track them all. Okay, what about you? What You think of another one? Of course. I think this one's <laughs> funny. There's a game called Virtua Tennis 2. As you Much can imagine, it's yeah. about tennis. So Go on. These brilliant marketing people had this brilliant idea. Why not take... Virtua Tennis 2 to Wimbledon, the most famous tennis tournament in the whole entire world. Yeah, that makes sense so far. So far, it makes sense. But how about this? Instead of just like making a billboard or handing stuff That's out money. or doing a demo, they decided to spray paint 20 pigeons with the game's logo. And then <laughs> they trained these pigeons to fly in and out of the tennis court at this event. Did Wimbledon know about this? Do we know? It does not say. <laughs> okay. But it does say that no birds were harmed in any way. Wow. They were just spray painted. <laughs> they love it. They told. They actually, they told them like, "Oh, we love this. Thank you." Yeah, chirp once if you're grateful. 
Squawk? Yeah, and these pigeons also were supposed to like fly across the tennis court and flap the logo in people's faces in the crowd and then like fly to the other side. Did you see oh that? Oh my gosh. Did you? I didn't see any video. I wish two. I had seen video. Maybe it's there, but yeah, people would be shocked to you see a pigeon it's there. trying to show them a logo for a tennis game. I, I, I need to find a video of this. <laughs> it's on the, yeah, check the, check the online. It's got it. Uh, it's got to be there. All the aliens sent it to me. Bill Did Burns. you hear about that one time that uh, Sony threw a party for God of War 2 with a dead goat? <gasps> I did not hear about that, but goats are like one of my favorite animals, so that makes me kind of sad. Yeah, oh, but the live causes. the live version though. What? Yeah, you like the live ones. Oh, like I, yeah, the live I like ones. the I like live ones. That's yeah. why I said it made me a little sad. But I mean, what happened? Uh, d- does that not explain it? Like, no, I that's need more. About what I... happened? They they legit like freshly killed a goat. And they, I know it was fresh because they say from all accounts that it was still warm because they invited people to come up. This is for God of War 2, by the way. They invited people to come up and reach into the goat's stomach of the carcass. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. You know, just, just another, just another Thursday night hanging just out with uh, climb, Sony. Climb into it like a tauntaun. <laughs> yes. Star Wars tie-in. Not not nearly as creepy when you put it that way. Yeah. But yeah, so that was that was their uh, big PR stunt for God of War 2 and they quickly like it went out in PlayStation magazine and all sorts of stuff. They pulled a lot of copies. I think they said like 30,000 copies, maybe 20,000 wow. copies of that off the shelves. Um but uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of regrets. Well, speaking of no regrets uh, or some regrets, <laughs> back when Burnout yeah, Two all came the out, regrets. Uh, back when Burnout Two was coming out, uh, Acclaim decided to tell the people of Britain that if they went out and were caught speeding on the day that the game was released, that they would pay the fine uh, for their ticket. They would, were going to receive. They were pulled over. Um, they wanted the they wanted players to go out and mimic the frenzied driving of the, you find in Burnout Two. So <laughs> rather so than stupid. backing down when they were confronted about it, uh, they used the excuse that they were trying to promote. They weren't trying to promote speeding, but rather trying to ease the fiction, financial pain. Sorry, they were trying to ease the financial pain that speeders were suffering from in the UK. Like, no, don't go speed, but we're just trying to ease the pain, guys. You're all right. Oh my God. But you're going to have to speed in order for us to pay for a ticket you would not have received had you been going the speed limit. That's Perfect. terrible. And that's on Flawless. you. Flawless. Yeah. Well, I don't like it, it. I wonder if they actually paid it. It doesn't say. Anywhere. Hey, Kate, <laughs> yeah. Kate can top that. I don't know if I could top that. But Resident Evil Outbreak. I don't know if you remember that game. Oh, I've heard of it. That sounds made well, up. Well, it caused a literal panic. A literal viral panic because this marketing team was like, hey, let's let's think of a really cool outside the box way to like market this. Right? Outbreak. So <laughs> they made this campaign telling gamers, oh, you guys could win prizes if you infect your friends by sending spam to their phones, promoting the game. <laughs> so what? <laughs> right. So if that happens. <laughs> Every friend you set you you would send this like surprise message and it would come from an unknown number, so not you. Show up on the phone as an unknown number and it would read, I'm infecting you with the T virus. Congratulations. Uh, that's past thanks. Yeah. Number so, deleted. Needless to say, the stunt caused a minor panic with the not so tech savvy people who were like, What's going on here? <laughs> that's my how phone you get a virus. Broken. Yeah, my gammy and pops are like, what's going you on? We got you the may want to go check yourself. Yeah, go get yourself checked out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah, it ended up the, the there was the backlash. The marketing company's response boiled down to like calling people stupid and gloating about how successful the campaign was. <laughs> well, nice. Resident Evil did That's a couple other ones too. Yeah, it's just they they're just trying to think outside the box, and I guess if they're not going to get in trouble for it for real, then. 
going to keep on keeping on. I guess. It's just like, why would you, I don't, why would. Well, well they want to sell video games, obviously. No, well, but they, why they would you a, think that that's okay to like do that? They did a scavenger hunt with body parts, like fake <laughs> body parts. <laughs> So, I mean, like, they These don't These are care. all natural things that you're going to do. Just, just very obvious uh, mm-hmm. marketing yeah. ploys Keep to sell the video games. Keep on the lookout for LTN-themed um, T-Virus. T-Virus. Oh, yeah. T-Virus. <laughs> That's the one. Yeah. T-1000 virus. Yeah. LTN-flavored Tic Tacs. Yeah. yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah. For a ministry. Well, last but not least, we got one more here for you. Uh, when Dante's Inferno came out, EA faked protesters. Um, if you don't know anything about Dante's Inferno, it talks about the, you know, the seven levels of hell and they hired people to go out there and protest their game while it was being released. And one of the signs said EA stands for electronic antichrists. <laughs> and that is so perfect. Just <laughs> so good. It was so good. That our buds over at Cyanide and Happiness did it again this year at PAX South 2019 for their game Rapture Rejects. They were literally picketing, walking around the the convention hall, uh, so much so that it got them stopped by some of our people um, who didn't know that it was a joke. And other people, like they had to stop doing it because they were getting complaints from the convention hall about picketers <laughs> being inside the convention hall. So oh, that's funny. I, I just, just love everything about yep. it. Everything about it. But uh, yeah, so those are those are some of the other uh, marketing ploys that we found on the internet and we thought were pretty hilarious, all sparked by the black hole that is <laughs> Fortnite. And I mean, if you think about it, like that is just a perfect analogy for Fortnite. Yeah, a black hole. I was thinking black mm-hmm. hole. Sexy right black in. hole. So uh, it takes all your money with it too. Uh, pretty pretty interesting how a free game can take all of your money. Right. Not my money. I don't have any to give. So boom, there you go. Hashtag not my money. <laughs> but hey, guys, that's going to do it for this episode, episode sixty nine of the Free Play Podcast. Be sure to check us out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube. And also radio.com, really anywhere else that podcasts can be found. And if you can't find us where you listen to podcasts, Too just bad. let me know. Oh, yeah. yeah That's get what I bent. Meant. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not a part of the Love Thy Nerd Facebook community, please make sure to just go and do it. Head on over to Facebook and search Love Thy Nerd Community and request to join. And we'll let you right in so long as you're not a robot or this T virus thing that uh, Kate was talking about. Yeah, be careful. Be careful. Yeah, you always got to be you, careful. You can also find us, uh, like I said, on Facebook. Just search Love Thy Nerd and like that page. Also, Instagram and Twitter, at Love Thy Nerd. Be sure to also follow Free Play Podcast on Twitter, at Free Play Podcast. Yeah. And make sure that you're following all the extra stuff that we do. All of it can be found on LoveThyNerd.com. Well, guys, once again, my name is Bubba Stalkup. I'm T-Virus Matt Wormbeer. Whoa. Oh, oh, oh. I'm Kate Kotowaki. And for our cute man, didn't change it from last time, <laughs> Jonathan Colossen. We'll catch you next week. And remember, Jesus loves you, nerds. Hey, also, before we quit, don't just don't forget to go sign up for PAX. PAX Unplugged. Oh, seriously. We want you to be there because we're not going to talk about It'll it again. It'll be like an early this. Christmas present to this yourself. This is the last time. I even deleted it from the show notes, so we won't say it yep. again. Yeah, well, it's we'll gone forever. That. It's serious. Well, hey, business. Jesus loves you, nerds. Get out there and go PAX. You have been listening to the Free Play Podcast with Bubba Stallcup, Matt Warmbier, and Kate Katawaki, part of the Love Thy Nerd Podcast Network. Be sure to rate and review the show and share on all the social media. Brought to you by Root Pump. Big Sexy.